What's up everybody, I am Jaspreet Singh and things just got a little bit more interesting because Fannie Mae, the entity that helps support the housing market in the United States, has come out and said that they predict a recession is on the way and that we can expect it in 2023. Now Fannie Mae definitely isn't the first big entity to come out and say that we could see a recession coming in the near future. I mean, we've seen big banks come out and say that we should prepare for a recession. We've seen economists say it and we've even seen former Federal Reserve officials come out and say that a recession might be coming. Coming. The real question that you want to be asking is if we do see a recession, how bad will it actually be? Because Deutsche Bank came out originally and they said that they predict a moderate recession and then a few weeks later they said, no JK, it's going to be a major recession. The answer to that is, well, it depends who you ask. Fannie Mae helps our housing market function because they provide liquidity for the housing market. They're one of the entities that buy the loans from the banks, so they keep the housing market running and they say that while we can expect a recession, they don't expect a very severe recession because they say that our strong housing market will prevent our economy from completely collapsing. So when I originally read this report and statement by Fannie Mae, I thought it was pretty straightforward, so I wasn't going to record this video. But then just recently, the new foreclosure data just came out and it wasn't very good. That's when I decided to dig a little bit deeper because on one hand, Fannie Mae says that yes, we can expect a recession, but don't worry, it'll be okay because we have a strong housing market. And on the second hand, foreclosures are going through the roof while the cost to buy a home is skyrocketing. Let's start with clarifying this. What is a recession? A recession is when you see two quarters of economic growth. So economic growth is measured through something called GDP, which stands for gross domestic product. A recession by definition is when you have two quarters, which is six months of economic decline. Now, what causes an economic decline? Well, it's when you have slower spending. Because if you have $100 in your pocket and you go to a restaurant and you spend that $100, but now this restaurant has more money that they can use to go and hire more employees, buy more products, go open another restaurant store. So when you spend more money, somebody else makes more money, which helps the economy grow. But when the prices of things go up significantly or if people don't have money to spend, well, now you go to the store and you don't buy anything. So if you don't go to the restaurant and spend $100, well now they don't have money to go out and invest in more people. They don't have money to go out and open up a new restaurant. They don't have money to go out and buy more products because people aren't spending as much money. So when spending goes down, that causes the economy to slow down and that's what a recession is if you see that happen for six consecutive months. So our economy right now is slowing down and if we see another quarter of slowdown, that means that we are in a recession. But if our economy can pick back up, then we're not in a recession technically yet. And the way that we're paying the price is through inflation. So now if you want to go buy your groceries, you want to go on a vacation, you want to go and do anything, it's going to cost you more money because the value of our dollars have dropped. So we've been seeing a record high amount of inflation and now to combat inflation, the Federal Reserve Bank is working to ramp up interest rates because it's a way to do the opposite of what we did in 2020 and 2021. In 2020 and 2021, it was a loose monetary policy of a whole lot of stimulus, putting money into the economy, cutting interest rates, now, the Fed is doing the opposite. They're raising interest rates, it's making it more expensive to borrow money, and they're doing quantitative tightening. They are reducing the balance sheet, they're selling off assets, which means that they don't want to have as many dollars in our economy. So these two factors working together is what everybody's paying attention to, to see whether or not we're going to have a recession. Inflation has been hovering at around 8 to 9%, which means that if your income or your wealth has not grown by 8 to 9% from one year ago, that means you're poorer today than you were one year ago. This is the problem with inflation is that it disproportionately affects the middle class and the poor negatively versus the wealthy because the middle class and the poor are the people that pay the price through inflation while wealthy, the people who own the assets, benefit. Remember, a recession is caused by slowdown in the economy and a slowdown in the economy is measured by slowdown in spending. So if the price of everything goes up and the amount of income that you have, the money that you have hasn't increased that much, that means you just have less money that you can spend. So if you have less money to go out and buy stuff in the economy with, that means there's going to be less spending happening in the economy. You just don't have enough dollars to go out and spend the way that you could before, so you shrink your lifestyle, which means less spending, which means a slowdown in the economy. So that's what we're seeing happen on the consumer level, and now it's becoming a bigger issue on the business side as well. I was just talking to a buddy of mine who is a pretty high up executive official in one of the bigger automotive companies, and what he was telling me is that inflation is really 
hurting their company's profits, that they're bleeding money right now. And the reason why they're bleeding money is because of inflation, that they've been trying to eat up these higher costs, but they can't keep doing that anymore. And now they're also facing a pricing power issue because they don't have the ability to keep raising the price of their products because consumers can't keep affording their products. And so they're facing a really tough issue because on one hand, you have CPI, which is the inflation that consumers feel. And then on the business side, there's something called PPI. Well, CPI has been between eight and 9%, but the PPI, which is the inflation that business owners feel is somewhere between 11 to 12 percent, which means this higher cost that businesses have to produce products is much higher than what the inflation that consumers are facing. And so businesses are facing a tougher and tougher dilemma now because if you don't have the ability to keep raising the price of your products because people can't afford your stuff, even though your cost is going up, it's going to hit your profits. And if your company isn't structured in a way to be able to absorb this higher cost, well, that's gonna be a bigger problem. And that's what the buddy of mine was saying. Now, in case you were wondering, he does not work for a public company, so you cannot trade this information because it's not insider information. Sorry, this is where you have to pay attention to how interest rates are gonna affect businesses and investment in businesses because we're gonna see a big change in that. Now, before I talk about this, I do wanna let you know that if you wanna stay up to date in what's happening in the top finance and business world like this, you can check out Market Briefs. It's a free financial newsletter that I created where my team works to break down the top finance and business news into a fun and easy to read and witty newsletter. You can read it in less than five minutes every morning. And now you don't have to worry about reading every single little news source. You don't have to worry about spending hours Hours trying to decipher what's happening in the news. We break it down into a fun and easy to read email. And I promise you, you're gonna wake up and love reading our newsletter every morning. So if you wanna join Market Briefs, it's completely free. And I'll put the link to how you can do that down in the description below. For the last number of years, and especially the last two years, we've seen a massive boom of venture capital investing into startups. And the reason why venture capital companies have been able to invest so much money into startups is through the help of cheap debt. Because if you are an investing institution, if you are a venture capital company, and you can borrow hundreds of millions of dollars at three or four percent a year, you don't need that big of a return in order to justify your investment. So you are making millions and millions and millions of dollars of investments into companies which may or may not work and you were just throwing your money around because, well, the money was cheap. So it was very easy to find funding for these startups and you had no real incentive to produce a profit if you were one of these startups because, well, why would you wanna produce a profit when you could just continue to borrow money and continue to leverage up your operations and try to go bigger and bigger and bigger? But now that interest rates are getting higher quickly because we just saw that the Fed raised interest rates again, that means it's gonna get even more expensive to borrow money. Well, now that it's becoming more and more expensive to borrow money and it looks like it's gonna get even more expensive because the Fed wants to hike interest rates even more and even more aggressively, well, that means that you are not gonna see that same type of investment that we did before. Because before, if you could borrow money at three, four, five percent as a venture capital form, you didn't need a big return, maybe just 6%. But now, if you have to borrow money at 8% at a venture capital firm, that means you need to see at least a 10% return on your money. That means you're gonna be a pickier investor and you're not just gonna keep throwing your money into the same startups that you were before because you're gonna need a more proven process and you're gonna need more proven systems. So now, as a tide is starting to go out, we're gonna see which companies can continue to survive because it's gonna be harder for some companies to access capital. And if it's harder for these companies to keep accessing cash and you're not producing a profit, well then either you're gonna get bought out or you're gonna go bankrupt. Ray Dalio, the billionaire investor, talked about this in 2020 because he was talking about how cheap debt cannot build real wealth. Because the whole idea was if we just cut interest rates and we allow this type of cheap investment into companies, we'll be able to produce more wealth. But he said is you can't do that. You have to create real innovation if you want real wealth. Because now what's happening is companies had no incentive to produce a profit. So companies were spending more money on growth instead of actually producing something of value. Because if I can sell you a dollar for 95 cents, guess what? I'm gonna get a lot of users. I'm gonna get a lot of customers because who's not gonna want a dollar for 95 cents? Everybody would take that deal, so it's very easy to grow, but it doesn't matter what my product is. And now, as it becomes more and more expensive to borrow this money, you're not gonna see those same type of deals. You're not gonna see those same type of offers, which means that certain companies may go under. And if these companies start to go under, that can hurt the economy because that means people lose their jobs. And so this is something that you wanna pay attention to because as interest rates continue to go up, you're gonna see a shift in how businesses get money 
which businesses get an investment and how businesses earn profits. And if businesses are not able to continue to earn profits, when it becomes more expensive to borrow money, you're gonna see a shift in the economy and businesses and startups. And of course, I'll be keeping you up to date on our YouTube channel, which is why if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that and check out Market Briefs down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see why I'm not actively investing my money into stocks right now, I made a video covering that and you can watch it by clicking this button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling. If you have your own company, there's no better investment than yourself. Of course, it's risky because there's a chance that you will fail, but it's an investment in you.